Nothing can ruin a backpacking or camping trip more comprehensively than not being able to get a good night's sleep. This is going to be a two-part video. The first part, which you are watching right now, is the part where I'm going to discuss your sleeping system, what sort of gear you should buy, what you should look for when you're buying gear, and how to be the most comfortable. The two most common reasons for not being able to sleep at camp are because of cold or because of discomfort. Let's start from the ground up. I'm going to first talk about sleeping pads. If you're camping with a car somewhere, then you probably are familiar with air mattresses. Air mattresses can be really comfortable. They can even rival the comfort of your mattress at home, but air is very, very cold. So if you are going to be using an air mattress, then you really want to think about adding some insulation. You can put down a emergency space blanket on the ground, put the air mattress on top of that, then put blankets on top of the air mattress and then sleep on top of those. If you're backpacking, then there are also air mattresses that are far more minimalist and lightweight, and some of them even have heat reflective layers built into them so that they aren't as cold. They also fold up really, really small. Unfortunately, this type of backpacking air mattress is the one kind of mattress that I do not own. So I can't give a first-hand experience of those particular mattresses. I will say, however, that whether you're car camping or backpacking, if you're using a mattress that is exclusively air, then you do want to think about the worst case scenario where you're getting a puncture in that mattress. I would at least recommend taking some repair patches with you just in case. On the other side of the spectrum, there are foam mattresses. Foam mattresses get quite a bad rap because they are very cheap and therefore they're the kind of mattresses that most people start out using when they're backpacking and they use the really really thin blue or green foam mattresses which I agree are unbelievably uncomfortable. I can't even sleep on those things, it's like sleeping on a piece of wood. However, you do actually get thicker foam pads and they're not that much more expensive, they're just a little bit more bulky. And I have used one of those and it is extremely comfortable, extremely lightweight, and my cats have clawed it to pieces and it still functions perfectly well because it's not air and it can't get a puncture. The other really nice thing about foam mattresses is that they're very, very good at insulating you from the ground. So they're pretty warm all on their own. You probably won't have to add any additional insulation. Then in the middle of these two camps are the foam and air hybrid mattresses like the Thermarest mattress behind me or the Blue K-Way one behind me. These mattresses are a mix of both foam and air. So they have quite a lot of insulation built in already, but they're also very comfortable because of the addition of air. They also fold up a lot smaller than traditional foam mattresses, so they can actually fit inside of your backpack. These type of foam air hybrid mattresses can be pretty pricey, especially the Thermarest ones, which are also fairly warm. But the Thermarest ones at least are really well made, so they should last you for quite a few years. Although these foam and air hybrid mattresses do have some foam in them, if they do get punctured, you're not going to have a very pleasant night's sleep. So I would also highly recommend taking a repair kit if you're using one of these mattresses. Whichever type of mattress you decide to use, the most important thing that you should do is make sure that that mattress fits you. Backpackers often try to shed weight by taking a much shorter sleeping pad and then using something else underneath their legs, often their backpack, so that they don't have to carry such a large sleeping pad. I have never done this, but it is partially because I'm a fairly short person, so the sleeping mats that I use are anyway ladies sizes and are already a little bit smaller. If you sleep on your back, then you want to try and get one that's slightly wider so that your arms don't keep falling off of the sleeping pad. If you sleep on your side, then you're going to want to look at one that has a little bit more cushion, perhaps something that has a little bit of air to provide a little bit of additional comfort because all of your body weight is going to be pushing down on a much smaller area 
than people who sleep on their back. Let's move on to sleeping bags. The big debate is always synthetic sleeping bags versus down sleeping bags. This just refers to the type of filling that is inside of the sleeping bag. Some sleeping bags use a synthetic fill and some sleeping bags use down feathers. The major differences between these two types of sleeping bags, down is far more expensive, but it compresses a lot more and in terms of its warmth to weight ratio, it is the winner. So you'll have quite a small sleeping bag that is still quite warm. Synthetic sleeping bags, on the other hand, are much bulkier for their warmth, but synthetic sleeping bags also tend to be a lot cheaper and arguably perhaps more ethical depending on where the company that you're buying from sources it's down. There is also the argument to be made that synthetic fibers still insulate a bit when they're wet as compared to down which does not insulate when it's wet. If you can't afford the price tag of down, then I really recommend looking into synthetic sleeping bags. For my budget backpacking gear project, I bought the Mr. Price Senior Cowl minus five degree sleeping bag from Mr. Price Sport. And it is one of the best sleeping bags that I have. I am perfectly confident taking it onto the Drakensberg escarpment, so above tree line. It really is very warm and it functions very well. And it was very inexpensive. If you do have the cash for a down sleeping bag and you would like to go with the slight weight savings that you're going to have by getting one, then you must remember that down does require special care. You cannot wash it in your washing machine with your usual detergents. You're going to have to get some special down wash and wash it according to the manufacturer's recommendations. Another thing that I will mention as I have washed down jackets and my own blue kazoo down sleeping bag before is that down takes a really long time to dry and if you do not have access to a low heat tumble dryer so long as the manufacturer allows that sort of thing of course then you're looking at multiple days of waiting for your down garment to dry so do not wash your down sleeping bag or your down jacket right before you are planning to go on a trip because it will not be dry by the time you need to go on that trip. Sleeping bags also come in two main shapes. There's the usual rectangle style sleeping bag that I think many people are familiar with from their childhood. And then there is a mummy shaped sleeping bag, which does look a little bit like a sarcophagus. It contours around your shoulders and narrows towards your feet. Sleeping bags can also have cowls which come over your head or they can have no cowls at all. Whichever sleeping bag you decide to buy, some of the things that you should look out for is the presence of baffles, particularly around the areas that are going to be open, so around your neck or face area if it has a cowl, and also baffles along the zippers that are going to help prevent air getting in. Something that is also very important is to make sure that wherever there is stitching, such as along the baffles, that stitching should not penetrate all the way through to the inside of the sleeping bag. If the sleeping bag is sewn in that manner, where the stitching goes right from the outside to the inside, that channel is going to allow cold air in. The very last gear item that I'm going to talk about when it comes to sleep systems is a bit of a controversial topic, and that is pillows. Some people swear by taking a pillow with them, and some people think that it is a complete waste of weight. If you are car camping and weight is not so much of an issue, I do highly recommend just taking a regular pillow from home because it makes the world of difference, especially if you're a side sleeper and you need a bit of extra elevation underneath your head. If you are backpacking, my recommendation would be to try and use what you already have. So stuff sacks stuffed with additional clothing or blown up with air if they're waterproof stuff sacks or even using things like your backpack or other soft gear items under your head. If you really want, you can take some sort of portable pillow with you. This is not the best example, but it's the only one that I have. You can get far lighter weight versions of this sort of thing that you can take with you backpacking. If it makes you comfortable at night, then go ahead and take it. In the second part of this series, I'm going to talk about tips 
for getting a really good night's sleep. I will put a link in the video description to the second part of the series so that you can watch that part as well.